Welcome on this third Sunday of Advent, the 13th of December. Again this week we remember John the Baptist and how he prepared the way of the Lord as a voice crying in the wilderness. May we listen to God's messengers all around us as we prepare to greet Jesus at Christmas when he comes again in glory. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we progress through this season of Advent, we can prepare our hearts for the joy of Christmas by cleansing them of guilty memories. God is always prepared to forgive when we admit our failings, and so we confess them now. Lord, we have dimmed the light of the world with our foolish fears. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we have cried out in anger instead of compassion for others. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we have allowed the world's commotion to muffle the Spirit's voice. Lord, have mercy. May God have mercy upon us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and surround us with peace and love now and always. Amen. Collect for the third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading set for today is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, where the Lord promises that the Spirit will anoint someone to bring the best of good news to God's oppressed people. This is the reality of our salvation. In our 
epistle for the Eucharist, the letter to the first letter to the Thessalonians. Constant in prayer, Christians are urged to accept the Spirit's guidance with joy and gratitude, seeking to do good as they await the Lord's coming. gospel reading introduced as a witness to the light john identifies himself as one who prepares the way for the promised messiah already present but not yet recognized here the gospel of our lord jesus christ according to saint john there was a man sent from god whose name was john he came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John answered him, John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. I 
I gather in recent years there's been a television talent show from South Korea which has spread on some television channels in the States and uh, Australia and even in the UK called The Masked Singer in which celebrity panellists try to guess the identity of other celebrities performing in elaborate costumes that conceal their faces and sometimes most of them. Clues are given in pre-recorded clips with the guests speaking voices heavily disguised. Eventually, politicians, sporting legends, comedians and actors, as well as professional singers, are unmasked and they sing again, their identities revealed. The programme apparently attracts huge television audiences worldwide. People are intrigued, eager to discover the true identity of these mysterious singers. Exasperated judges and audience members frequently shout, Who are you? But in the case of some contestants, their identity isn't revealed for several episodes. In today's Gospel, John the Baptist is twice asked, Who are you? The panel of religious establishment delegates come up with some guesses, but they're all wrong. John assures them that he isn't Elijah or any other prophet from the past, nor is he the Messiah. And he claims there's someone else present whose identity they haven't yet guessed, but they fail to spot that clue. John himself didn't recognise Jesus as the Messiah until he baptised him. As he reveals in the verses that follow today's reading, John's baptism with water is superseded by baptism with the Holy Spirit. John's own speaking voice is not disguised as he preaches about the Lord's identity, and he refers to the equivalent of a pre-recorded clip by quoting the prophet Isaiah. John's voice cries out in a wilderness both literally and metaphorically. The other Gospels reveal that he is living in the wilderness, but he's also preaching in the context of a spiritual wilderness, where faith in the God of love has been sidelined. The basic commandments to love God in return and to love other people have been obscured, masked by two things. First, a focus on petty rules and religious regulations which have served only to distance people from one another and from God. And secondly, the pressures and distractions of everyday life which have taken priority for so many. It's John's task to build a straight path through this spiritual wilderness to prepare the way for Jesus, who, anointed by the Spirit, will remind people of God's gifts of peace and joy. The only requirement is repentance, which simply means turning aside from wrongdoing and turning towards God, the God who loves us. God's care for human beings will be clearly demonstrated in the ministry and teaching of Jesus as he heals people suffering from physical or mental illness and as he welcomes the outcasts. Many people, of course, still failed to spot those clues and it would take further episodes, his sacrifice, his death on the cross, his resurrection. It would take further episodes of life before his identity would eventually be revealed to those who are prepared to see. Just as we wait during Advent, not only for Christmas, but for the second coming of Jesus, so the people of Israel were waiting for the coming of the Anointed One, the Messiah. Why did so many not recognise him? Sadly, perhaps because their expectation was of someone very different from Jesus. Their image was disguised by the mask of contemporary politics. Rather than longing for someone to restore their relationship with the God who created them and loved them, 
They were looking for a royal warrior, someone coming along on a great horse with a big sword to send the occupying Romans packing. They wanted someone who would simply make Israel great again. That might sound familiar to us today. Do we still allow the preoccupations of this life to obscure our image of God? Do we worry about the state of the world without trusting in God's loving purposes for humankind? As Christmas approaches again, do we focus too heavily on preparations for the festive occasion, important as that is? Does the stress of planning for presents and dinners and visits, even more so in these strange pandemic times, does all this planning shut out the recognition of God's presence with us? Like John the Baptist, we too can prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness of our own hearts and those of others. Let us look for signs of God's presence in our lives and share that knowledge, for only then can the true identity of Jesus be revealed. The Word made flesh, the light of the world. Then all the masks are removed and we can sing for joy. Amen.
prayer can help us find a way through the wilderness of this world. As the light of Christ shines through our fears, illuminating the path of peace. So we pray for the church, for the world and for ourselves. We give thanks that Jesus is revealed as our saviour. May the church never seek to conceal him behind a mask of intolerance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who work for peace and justice. May world leaders not seek to disguise their greed behind shows of diplomacy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for masks that can prevent the spread of infection. We pray for all medical staff working in difficult situations and for all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those in our lives who never conceal their love for us. May we see God's love in their kindness and their care. We give thanks for the promise of eternal life, remembering those we love who now see God in his nearer presence, face to face. Faithful God, you promised through your Son to hear us when we pray in faith. We give thanks that you hear us now as we pray in his name, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Ein tad ar hwnnwyd yn y nefoedd, sain taith i ydy unw, dyled y daernas, gwneud y wallus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddau a hefyd. Dar o'i ni heddiw a'n barabai naddio, a mae ddau i'n ni a'n dyledion, fel y mae ddau i'n dynnau i'n dyledwyr. Ac nac ar o'i ni i brofid i gaeth, aeth ei gwared ni rhag drwg, can i saith o tîr dynas, a gallu a gwgoniant yn oes oesoedd. Amen.
we look for Christ's coming in glory. May we see the Father's love in creation's beauty and recognize the Holy Spirit in the kindness of others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.